Hello and welcome to Infinity. A little while ago I released a set of macros called about luminosity selection and like luminosity masking and they were very popular and I've done an update to them so I'm going to explain what I've updated and also give a bit more of a summary and explanation of what's in them. So let's go. So overall then what I've done since then is I brought out the hue uh, such selection and also saturation selection macros and I t adopted a style there naming of things and I'm just bringing that styling naming into this. I also in there I produced a monochrome protect addition to it and I've now similarly to the hue and saturation particularly the hue because saturation is a about the monochrome thing, but I, I've added mono protection to that, and it'll appear elsewhere in other macros as well because it's turned out to be quite useful. And in the macro set, there was a set of mass conversion macros, and I have taken those out and put them elsewhere. They will appear because I'm adding to them in another macro set because they apply to any of the selection macros and I'm doing some more interesting ones as well which will appear in due time. So overall then as a kind of summary and a picture of how it all works. When I say smart luminosity what I mean is that you can select a band of luminosity like this. So this is not black to white here and like in curves and so on and from this here it's transparent to opaque here which is like in blend ranges. You could in fact do all this in blend ranges but this is just a heck of a lot easier and more intuitive and more useful. So here effectively you've got, you've got a band in here and you can select um, three things in particular but a bunch of other stuff around it. First of all you can select the middle so you can move this up and down the band that is selected. You can change the width of it, in other words how much is selected here. You can also change the feathering, both in how much is feathered and the style and shape of the feathering either side. We see full luminosity. What that means is a similar sort of thing, but now you've got each of these four points that you can set, which the key thing about this is you can change the feathering either side to fit in with whatever you want to do with it. With parabolic selection here. This is a different style but it is based on a very popular and common way of doing this. You see things like darks 1, darks 2 and so on which are a set of curves but with this you can have continuously variable curves. So curves like this but it, you can actually just slide it up and down between the two. So you literally go from selecting mostly darks through to kind of half and half and then effectively excluding lights. What you can also do with it is what's called hard width. Effectively you're sliding this out here so you're getting a solid chunk here is being selected as opposed to the drop off here in opacity as you move out. And with the light you've got the same effect from the other end so it's the same thing just flipped over. With the midtones it is closer to the original luminosity selection Again you can select the middle here so you can slide this up and down. You change the width with it with soft width. And you can also move it up and down so if you move it up and down with hard width here then as it moves up you've effectively got a solid chunk here selected. Then you move it down then it is you know it becomes more and more transparent. But it's again it's fast and easy to do. Okay let's do some of this in practice. So what you've got here, here are the old ones, there's Dave's Luminosity Selection. To introduce the new one you can download it from where you'll find the resources and the links below. Look for Luminosity Mask and it will be the Luminosity Selection, it will be the latest version of that. You then here you go to Library, Import Macros and you will have downloaded something here. It should say V2 and then when it is introduced here the number two here on the end, by the way, is put in by Affinity Photo because it saw we already got one here. So it changed the name of it here just so that it would fit in more nicely, which is kind of kind of it. And here you have all the macros here. 
we're going to compare these with the original ones up here. So with luminosity zone basic here is the same as full luminosity selection. The luminosity zone easy is the same as smart luminosity selection. And luminosity zone easy manual weighted is the same as smart and manual. I've also added smart and simple, which is basically one with this is it does the same sort of thing, but with far less controls. So it's if you just want to do the basic stuff and you'd want all the extra options, that's what this does. Let's have a look at this in practice. So with this, let's take the smart one. And I'm going to go here and if I do with this, you turn off the bottom layer and you can then see what you are selecting. So open this here. So the middle to you can just I'll bring down with you can see it. But you can literally track from just picking up the darks all the way through the mid tones up to the lights. And then when you decide what you want, you can increase the width to take more or less of that and introduce feathering. You can change here with this um, how it's calculated. So you can well, just change the appearance of it a bit. Try these things see if you want. You can change the feathering style. Again, find what you want. And usefully as well, you can invert it. So say rather than heft, this will have the opposite. Of course, in this way, you've got the checkerboard. That means that is not selected. Now, the new part, monoprotect, it's the same as in, say, hue selection, where if I turn this up here, what I'm going to get, let's put this up to the middle here so you can see this a bit more, is you get a lot of greys and things in here. What if I want to take those out? So the mono protects, if I turn this up, those greys disappear. So I'm only effectively selecting the colours. And I can also then turn up the feathering so I soften the edge so you can't see it appearing. And with this again, you can vary here how the feathering is done, which should be slightly different. The more feathering you've got, the more you'll see the effect. Four different ways here of calculating it. Try them all until you get the one you want. You can also invert it. This is really useful because at the moment, say this is selecting the colours, but if I flip that, now I'm selecting just the monochrome. So you can work with one or the other. So you can select by luminosity and then by the monochrome or something. So let's do an example with this here. For this, I'll use the smart and simple one to show you that. So now you turn off the layer underneath so you can see what's selected. Then select this new say here. You've only got five things here to change. So what we do is typically we'll turn down the width so you want to get the middle of the area you want. Suppose we're trying to get the waterfall here. So we try, try up and down here until you get the kind of middle of the waterfall. Then you put up the width to select what you want here. Maybe just the feathering. You might want to fill all that later because it's, it's responsive. You can always come back to it. But then you've got a lot of other things selected here. Often turning up mono protect will take out things like that. And if you don't want it, you need to go to the, uh, well, it's the wrong way around. You can also go back to the full one and do the invert on that. And add a bit of feathering, which will bring some stuff back. But you can see what you've got here is this area then selected. Then I can do something like, if I turn the bottom layer on, nothing's effectively changed, but I can go to here now. I can do something like add curves. And now I can turn this up. So I can do just the area selected. If I wanted just this, but not this area, it's very, very easy. We just need to get a paintbrush, make sure I've got black selected, and then paint out with a opacity 100 hardness zero. I'll typically use and you know, paint off the areas there so that what you're seeing is just the waterfall. So you've got before and after. Very, very targeted selection and action on that. Okay, that's it. And thank you very much for watching.